Jeffrey does all six bad habits that make him look weak in front of everyone, especially the hot girls he wants nudes from. He skipped the gym today, he ate junk food, and he even relapsed on his nofap streak. Jeffrey stays up late again, even though he said he was gonna wake up at 5 a.m. tomorrow and go on a run like David Goggins. Boo! You look weak, Jeffrey. Adonis! Adonis sees Jeffrey ruining his reputation in front of everyone. It's gonna be hard to come back from this, right? Wrong. Adonis brings Jeffrey onto self-improvement. Lifting weights, meditating, reading, journaling, all transform Jeffrey into a new person. When he steps back in, everyone treats him with respect. And best of all, Jeffrey gets a girlfriend. Adonis, you've done it again. I remember being in high school in the locker rooms for our sports class and I was on my phone playing some game and my best friend comes up to me. He snatches my phone out of my hand and kind of, you know, runs off in like this goofy way wanting me to like chase him. But for some reason I'm in this like really sensitive <laughs> mode that I'm genuinely really hurt and offended and like I'm kind of withdrawing into myself. I kind of chase him a little bit but he's faster than me, he's being playful, he's doing this. Then he kind of passes my phone to another guy, he kind of hides it behind his back and you know like it's almost like everyone's in on it. Everyone's kind of watching me I'm feeling like just overwhelmed like a pretty socially anxious introverted kid at this point right eventually everyone can see that I'm actually getting like really upset my friend comes and gives me my phone back and I start like whimpering and crying and another friend looks at me and he's like why are you crying you got your phone back and I couldn't really explain it, but I was just so sensitive. And as much as, you know what, straight when people saw that I actually was quite hurt by this, they kind of, you know, stopped making it worse. Of course, you're gonna look weaker to people. And if you don't wanna look weak to other people, then you have to avoid these six bad habits. If you've got a pair of balls, then do this action step. Scroll down on this video and go to the comments and write the story of a time that you looked weak. Don't just read everyone's comments and kind of scroll a little bit. Write your comments, post it, and then come back up here and make the video full screen again. Now, when you avoid all six of the bad habits that I'm going to walk you through, especially the last one, you will start to appear more strong to other people. The first bad habit, which is what I did wrong in that story, is being overly sensitive and upset at minor things. Like that makes you look like a complete and utter wuss. Now, is there truth in having this sort of emotional intelligence to feel and honor the emotion that arises? When you study more into like mental health and trauma, you'll realize, oh yes, there is. But even Either way, if you're getting sensitive and you're starting to like cry and get proper offended that, you know, your friend's goofing around with you and that, you know, someone said something that isn't even that offensive, but for some reason you're so offended at it, it will make you look weak. You need a bit of a tougher outer shell because people are going to say some shit to you every now and then. Someone's going to look at you weird. Someone's going to bump into you. And if you take everything as like this personal offense, it shows that you have this weak mind where you have this kind of personality of like, oh, the whole world's targeting me. The stronger mindset is to know that any Anything that anyone does to you is not actually a reflection of you. It's a reflection of them. So let's put you in this scenario, right? Scenario one, you're walking across the street. Some guy pulls up in his car, rolls down his window and swears at you. In this scenario, you get really offended and the rest of your day is ruined. Scenario two, you're walking across the street. Some guy pulls up in his car, rolls down his window, swears at you. You're making sure that, you know, nothing violent's going to happen. But when he drives off, you just kind of think, oh, what a dickhead. And you just think, oh yeah, he's probably having a bad day. Be honest, which version are you normally? Would the rest of your day be affected by that? Would you be there like six hours later on your computer watching Hamza videos still kind of weirdly upset that that guy said that? Because the truth is that guy would have said that to anyone and if you were getting upset at this, you were getting upset at basically someone who's just like had a bad day and he's randomly lashed out and it just so happened to be you. The stronger version of you doesn't take offense and get sensitive to these things. He understands that people are having bad days and as much as you don't want shit thrown onto you, you don't want people to chat shit, whatever. It's life. A lot of humans have got a lot of trauma, emotional baggage that they haven't healed from. And respectfully, you should respond to a lot of people, including adults, like they're little children. If a little boy came up to you and shouted at you and said, you're a poo-poo head, would you still be there six hours later watching one of my videos thinking like, man, why did he say that? Oh God, can't believe it, bro. Oh man, like you're journaling about it. Am I a poo-poo head? Like why would he? The truth is a lot of people, including a lot of adults, honestly have like the emotional maturity of like, little children. Most people have never read a book on healing trauma. Most people got traumatized when they were young, never healed from it, never done a single session of meditation, journaling, trauma therapy, or anything like that. And then they just go out, just lashing out to other people. And the thing is you can, you know, think they're bad people, but you have control to not let them affect you. The second thing that makes you look weak is 
not being muscular or at least being in good shape. Because th really think about this. What's the opposite of looking weak? Really answer it. What's the opposite of looking weak? It's looking strong. How do you look strong? You physically build up your body. When you physically build up your body, you also build up your mind. You don't have to become like a big bodybuilder, but you've got to be in shape. There's zero excuses to be fat and to not have muscle. You can build like 10 pounds of muscle in your first year of training if you train pretty hard. And that will change the way that you look and also the way that you feel about yourself forever. This is a side point, but it actually blows my mind how few people tap into what's called noob gains in the gym. Like if you don't want to go hard in the gym, you don't want to make your life fine. But literally, if you just go for one year, you'll build noob gains and you'll build like 10 pounds of muscle and you'll like literally get into shape. And I can't believe how lazy people are that they just won't do that because they'll be like, oh, I don't really like, you know, lifting weights. Like motherfucker, just go for one year and you can maintain that in like literally 10, 15 minutes a week for the rest of your life. And you'll literally always look like two out of 10 better. So if you want to not look weak, you can physically look stronger, physically build muscle, physically get leaner, build that V taper that's so attractive in a guy. Bad habit number three that makes you look weak and you might be surprised by this. It's by being needy and being too available. When someone is needy, like for example, you're applying back to a girl too quickly all the time, or you're always available to speak to her. You'll stop any of your pursuits, your goals, whatever, your work, you'll stop it to like speak to this girl or this guy, or you'll drop everything for someone who isn't actually that nice to you. That isn't a sign of strength and of kindness. That's a sign of you breaking your back and lowering your priorities just to get accepted by someone else. Now, should you be an asshole and not reply to people and be detached from humanity? No, of course not. There's a fine line. The way to reply to girls, by the way, because this is always a question of like, how fast should you respond? You should just respond when you're on your phone and you see the message. If you're living a good life, naturally, there'll be times when you don't check your phone for like six hours. But then there'll be also times when you're on your phone and a girl will send you a message and you can reply back right away. So you send messages in this like massive variance. That's what I know of basically every single guy who I respect. That's the way he uses his phone. He doesn't sit there and think, oh, she sent me a message. I'll make her wait. That's shit you do in like high school when you've got a small dick. Once your dick gets to a good size and you're not in this fucking little insecure high school Snapchat kind of mode, even though you might still be in high school if you just want to act like you've got big balls, just message people when you're on your phone, but then make sure that you're not a sad little Jeffrey who's on his phone 24 seven. Disable the notifications, go out for a run without your phone, go exercise and you know, say to yourself, yeah, I'm not going to get distracted by my phone. My notifications just switched off. That means I want two hours out of your day. You're not replying to anyone. But when you sacrifice your goals and your own plan for someone else, that can be a bad thing if that other person wouldn't do it for you. So let me give you an example. Let's say you plan to go to the gym at 11 a.m. But then your mother asks you for help with something. Don't be a dick. Help your fucking mother. That's not needy or weak or anything. If anything, that's strength. But it's 11 a.m. You plan to go to the gym and some random girl who's barely ever spoke to you messages you and says, can you help her with the homework? That you would be a little bitch if you said like, oh yeah, sure. I'm here for you right now. Let's FaceTime for like two hours, even though you had a plan to go to the gym, right? Now, if that girl was your girlfriend who you love and you'll eventually have children with, then of course, it's a little bit different. That's someone you love. Of course, you can prioritize them over just what time you go into the gym. So you can see there's nuance in how you'd appear as weak and needy based on how connected you are to this person. But what you don't want to be is needy and over invested for someone who doesn't even like you back. That's when a guy looks so weak when he's like just obsessed over a girl who barely likes him back, who kind of responds back to his text messages, but she's not like actually interested. And there's so many guys who don't realize this brutal fact. Just because a girl texts you back does not mean that she actually likes you. Most girls have just got mental illness. They just love being on their phones. They love getting text messages. They love getting like new Snapchat. If you've ever seen a girl's phone on Snapchat, she loves having like 15 fucking messages on there unopened. You're one of them, little fucking chump. Just because a girl is messaging you back does not mean she's actually interested in you. If you're not brain dead, you'll know if a girl's interested because when you ask her on a date, she'll say yes, she'll show up and she'll bring like a lovely attitude with herself. If she says no to every time that you ask her out on a date, if she says yes, but then she cancels last minute every single time, she's not into you. And you'll appear weak if you keep fucking speaking to people like that because you can clearly show that you've got no self-respect. So you need to decide right now, is the dopamine of some girl replying back to you worth it at the cost of your own integrity, reputation, and self-respect? Because the answer should be fuck no. You don't need me to explain. You know who deserves your attention, your help, who's actually here for you. And if you ever prioritize some random girl who doesn't even like you over yourself and your loved ones, your mother, and you act like you don't have 
the time to spend like an hour with your mother here and there. Shame on you. That's the weakness. The weakness is being overly invested into someone who doesn't even like you back. The fourth bad habit that makes you look weak is speaking softly. I've done both. I've had times where I speak with like this deep pronunciation. I speak loudly with my hands. And I've also had times where I speak like really peacefully and softly, like if I'm in the gym and you know, I'm, I'm like not trying to be like an alpha male or anything. And I'm telling you right now, the brutal truth, people just disrespect you more when you speak softly. I thought that like if I spoke softly, it would be like not intimidating and people would respect it because, oh, he seems so peaceful. I noticed that in those moments when I would kind of speak a little bit softly, I would avert my eye contact to not make people feel uncomfortable. Those same people would start to almost try to bully me. So I went back to the full on like, you know, like alpha male style where you kind of have the good body language and you're holding eye contact and you're holding someone's eye contact up until they look away and you're speaking loudly. You're not trying to like lower your voice or anything. And the same people started to respect me after that. And they started to like behave basically. They started to like me. They started to be respectful. They stopped doing like weird shit that they were doing beforehand that, you know, was felt quite disrespectful towards me, like talking over me or whatever. I'm going to give you an extra tip that a lot of people love when I tell them this to speak more deeply and to speak like you are way more powerful. The tip that I'll always remember was from my cool black friend in university, Levi. And he told me of this tip called down talking. That's where you end the last word of your sentence at a deep pitch instead of at a high pitch. So this is how you probably talk. Do you know what time it is? This guy is going to ride the bus home and fap. Do you know what time it is? This guy's <laughs> getting deep throated. <laughs> Bad habit number five, poor body language. This was an obvious one if you're walking around like little bitch, little computer game nerd neck. And it was also included with this is the eye contact as well. If you're averting eye contact from people, I've actually right here, right now, gotten into a bad habit that I'm trying to get out of. I've gone into the habit that when I look at people, I'll give them like a little wink, but I've found that that actually makes it worse because it kind of breaks the eye contact. And I've found that people don't respect me as much. The best thing you can do is when you make eye contact with someone, hold the eye contact and just smile, just like, just smile, but don't be intimidated enough to like kind of you know like wink or you know look away the worst thing you can do is make eye contact with someone and look away right away you look like a bitch you want to make eye contact with someone don't be weird about it make eye contact and just smile along with that you want to walk around like you've just inflated your chest a little bit nothing crazy to the point that you look like you're being inauthentic but that you're strong you're confident you're almost in the military that's a good confident strong body language if you're ever feeling insecure about your body language by the way it is always better and it will always serve you more to have the strong confidence looking body language that might even seem like you're trying too hard than having the most like average beta male kind of body language where people can't help but to disrespect you. The truth is, like I said, a lot of people are like unhealed assholes. Honestly, a lot of people have went through so much shit in their lives. When these people turn into adults or into teenagers, they will take this shit out on you if you symbolize as someone who is basically weak and in a lower position in the social hierarchy. You don't want to be seen in that position. The reason why you might have gotten bullied in high school, how crazy is this? is that you walked in that first day with your shoulders kind of slumped and that was maybe the reason why you got picked on for five years straight. Think about how much of a difference it can be when you stand up tall like you're proud of yourself and then the final bad habit that makes you look weak is taking disrespect from people. Now there's a difference between taking disrespect and having like a joke with someone. So in the story I told you where my best friend took my phone and he wanted me to chase him, I wouldn't say that that was disrespectful. I know some fucking cringe self-improvement autist would be saying, yeah, it is. No one would do that to me. That was my best friend. He didn't mean to be disrespectful. It was like a boyish brotherly thing. He wanted me to chase him, right? That's not disrespectful. Disrespect is like someone comes up and swears at your face. Disrespect is someone's being threatening. Disrespect is like you're in class and someone like you don't like randomly makes like a joke about you. That's the difference. There's your best friend who's goofing around a little bit, but he didn't realize he's going to like accidentally upset you. And then there's a guy who's actually trying to attack you. There's the difference. Now, how do you deal with that disrespect? I'll make an entire video on that because there's different circumstances, right? If someone in public comes up and swears at your face, I wouldn't tell you, yeah, deal with the disrespect by punching him because then suddenly you're going to get put in prison for like fucking 12 weeks or some crazy shit. And then you're going to get like a criminal record or maybe he's got a knife. Maybe you accidentally punch him. He cracks his skull and now you've killed someone or maybe he punches you back and then he cracks your skull, then you're dead. So it's like crazy, right? So you need to use your own intuition, but you don't need to result in violence. But at the same time, you also don't want to appear like a little bitch, especially in situations like, for example, in the workplace and in school where you have to keep staying around someone. Like a lot of people are kind of like dogs. Like they'll just nip at you. They'll pick at you and they'll see how far they can get away with. If you let someone get away with a little bit of a bite onto you, they will do more. There's a phrase I want you to remember right here, right now. If you let a 
man steal your chickens, you may as well let him rip your daughter. You let someone get away with a little bit, he will take more. I know the quote sounds scary or whatever, but it is the truth. You know this, right? If you think about your experience in high school, I guarantee you can think of one little shit who you let get away with a bit of disrespect and he started to do it more and more and more. You need to be seen as the kind of guy that if someone does some shit to you, you can look at them and say like, do not do that again. You can be serious and defend yourself. Now, are you gonna act like that to your best friend who's goofing around and wants you to play with him? Don't do that again, bro, oh, I want my phone, no. Probably not. Don't be like the complete opposite version, which is like, yeah, I'm an alpha male and you better not do it. Cause that's fucking cringe as well. That also makes you look weak. But there's times when someone is genuinely attacking you, trying to hurt you. That's when you need to put your foot down and make sure you're not seen as a victim. Close your eyes, I want you to visualize this right now. Imagine it's 10, 15 years from now you've just woken up next to your beautiful feminine wife and you want to kiss her all over all over the shoulder the neck the side of her cheeks you wake up you've got this phenomenal physique you're strong you're mobile you've got healthy children running into the door they're all happy you're living the ultimate life for men this is the adonis lifestyle it's the vision that you will build when you follow my advice I want you to do something right now. Scroll down and open up the description of this video. The top link is my free self-improvement forum page. And inside of there, you can ask questions and you can give advice to each other. Go click on that top link and sign up right now.